what was it like but for me living in Alpha Z Delta sorority in, when I attended the University of Washington new so it's the new chapter of Alpha Z Delta sorority and I at the university so I lived there 2010 to 2011 not full year but I'll go through briefly I didn't live there long so it's not gonna be I hope a 15 minute video is keep it short um so we at the University of Washington when I started there which is the autumn quarter it's on the quarter system so it actually goes start the year in autumn and it goes September to December and then winter term is actually January January to about March um so I lived in the sorority September to fall so autumn 2010 and winter 2011 so approximately to September 2010 to March 2011 and we were allowed to rush our freshman year. So it was my first year at the University of Washington and in my freshman year. And we were allowed to rush. So I rushed and I got Alpha Z Delta sorority. And rushing is like where we go and tour a bunch of sororities. And they're like different um, stages of rushing. And like the sororities essentially get to pick people they want to come back to the house. And eventually if you get picked enough... Um, and it's a fit and that kind of thing, then you're accepted to the sorority. But then after it being accepted, there's like, we had a chapter every Monday, we had a dress up formal, there was a dress code on the house, we lived there. We got, in, I went through initiation, so that was the first term. Um, so I did get initiated, I rushed, was accepted and then initiated. And I got a big, uh, her name was Heidi, if I'm recalling correctly and um our family and so big is kind of like a big sister so there's sorority sisters and a big sister and we had a house so there's a greek row and our sorority was kind of at the end of greek row and there were approximately 100 women in the sorority not all of them lived in the house it was like maybe i think maybe like 60 people in the main house and then the others were still members of the sorority they just didn't live in the main house and in the main house, there was a study room. Um, in the basement, there was a laundry room, a room with like a TV and a kitchenette. There was a kitchen in like a dining hall because we had chapter together. So we'd eat, didn't, we'd dress up nice and eat dinner together and the cooks would cook for us. We were not allowed to use the kitchen, however. So it was not like a dorm room building <laughs> where there's a, a communal kitchen everybody could use. We weren't, that was off limits. We weren't allowed to use it. There was a fridge where we could store stuff. Um, and then the sleeping arrangement was, there were like, some rooms had bunk beds in them and dressers in them. Some had like, um, in like a desk or something. And then some people had sleeping porches. So I slept on the sleeping porch. A sleeping porch is a room with, the one I slept in, it was the same one, was approximately 14 people, if I'm home correctly. Um, so like seven bunk beds. And that's it. And, <laughs> and so, and we sleep in there every night. And then we had a different room where we had about this much closet space for two people. And we'd get like a set of six dressers. And we could, I, in the first room I got, we could, I could actually stretch my arms out and reach from one side of the room to the other. And there were six of us in that room. Um, so if one wants a lesson in sharing and being like really effective use uh there's no better <laughs> I, I lived in dorm rooms later in my college career nothing like the office delta sorority some of the sororities had much bigger spaces <laughs> we were on the smaller side which meant being becoming being or becoming excellent space savers to not pussy piss each other off um when so i moved in after rushing and then at winter break we actually had to move our stuff out so i moved in i moved all this stuff out I moved all my stuff back in for to a different room, but same sleeping porch. And then because I quit, I moved out all my stuff out again. And then after that, I moved into a dorm room. And then, then after that, I moved all my stuff back home because I couldn't keep the stuff in the dorm room over the summer. So I've actually moved six times all my belongings <clears throat> during my freshman year at the University of Washington at Hawaii. So when I say I moved 16 or 17 times during when I was in college, undergrad, um, six of those were my freshman year of college. Um, I was like, whoo, <laughs> lesson in starting to streamline what I take with me to college. Uh, so I don't have as much to move. I got much better at that in Hawaii. Um, anything else? So it was a drinking culture. The Greek fraternity, uh, the house was dry. The sorority was dry, but the fraternity would host parties. I went out on two nights and that was it. 
I, <laughs> yeah, I, I was not a partier. <laughs> Um, but there were some girls who would come back and my first term I was in a sleeping porch so on one of the bunk beds in the room was 14 women in it. Um, and the person on top threw up during the night and the vomit went on me in the bed and stuff. And so the next term, I, we, we were allowed to pick our beds and so I went for a top bunk so that didn't happen again. But then I got the person who was below me on the bunk bed said I shook the bed too much when I went to bed. Um, so I started actually, I took a sleeping bag with me and I slept in the room with our dressers sometimes because I didn't want to wake the person. Uh, yeah, so I quit. <laughs> And there were a lot of parties and stuff like that. And I was just like, I just want a consistent place to lay my head. Okay? And I'm getting either vomited it on or being like, don't shake the bed. I'm like, well, it's pretty hard not to shake a bed when I'm climbing up. right? Um, so I was like, you know what? Instead of making a hassle, I quit. So I quit and they took, I had bought like a sweatshirt and a quill, a pen, a brooch kind of thing uh, with our Alpha Z Delta on it after I got initiated. And they took it back and they didn't refund me. And everybody was kind of like... If you're going to take something, which I didn't agree to in the first place, right? I don't consent to these people taking my stuff, right? I bought it because it was mine. And they were like, no, we're going to take it back. Which is technically burglary. It's technically a felony. Because I don't consent. Uh, I did not consent. And they did not give me my money, right? <laughs> so I was just like, wow, low-key burglary through the University of Washington. Horrible school. Uh, I did end up transferring out of the University of Washington. And the Alpha Z Delta story uh, factored strongly into that. Um, so that's kind of what happened in brief. Oh, there was also, I remember, oh, there was a, sometimes the girls would come out, vomit in like the room where we had our dressers and then just kind of like pass out. And there was one person who actually put their shoes on a radiator in the bathroom. The bathrooms were shared. So we had like actual shower stalls. It was like a campground, you know, shower stalls, bathroom stalls and shared sinks. And there was a radiator and they put their shoes, they had vomit on, on the radiator. So there was vomit smell wafting throughout the house. Okay, I was, and we were all like, we're not cleaning up after this person, so we left it there. Um, like, I was also house manager, so I was in charge of getting people to clean up the common areas, making sure the house was in line with the fire code, and I was also a health and wellness chair, so that's like diet and nutrition for the sorority girls. Yeah, so I do have some background in nutrition, not food. Uh, I went to cooking school, but not that's not the same as work experience, right? In, the food industry that that would be the cooks okay uh as a tangent sarah Stroestrom today um achieved the most medals won in individual events by any one person all time at world aquatics championships so that's long with pool swimming and long course meters she with 21 medals she became the first person male female male or otherwise to achieve the feat Juan medal number 21 today in the 50 meter freestyle with a gold medal in a time of 26.32 seconds. Yes. So she dominated better than any American in history, <laughs> male or female, <laughs> long course swimming. And you know what's really cool? She didn't peter off like a lot of the Americans do. But a lot of Americans, you know, like seven years ago set a world record in a <laughs> uh, long course meters event and then they keep swimming and keep winning medals but they don't actually get faster she actually got faster and she did a world record in the semifinals of the semi event she won a gold medal in, and I was like there's a golden standard for somebody who actually swims and actually continues to improve um, over the course of their career versus like you can think of like the Americans just kind of freeload and coast um, my Leon uh, also known as my Jerome we have decided to, he actually let me make the decision, relationship decision, soulmate decision, if he's my soulmate. Uh, we're not going to pursue uh, him getting the medals from the American that cheated by executing the medals, uh, races, and times that he wrote down before any of the cheater e executed those. So um, we've decided to take a step back. The Americans currently hate the French, especially with the 2024 Summer Olympic Games coming up. Uh, so... We're like, we'll be lucky if my Leon even gets to keep his medals at this point. So, uh, or moving forward. So we're just not interested in those medals whatsoever. So these, this is accurate. Uh, Sarah Stirstrom is the greatest of all time, male, female, or otherwise. Yeah. Happy. And that's a tangent. Um, but happy. And I'll link to a video I meant, um, where I provide, if I write slash finish a biography about Sarah Stirstrom, where it would be shelved on the local library at a local library and i filmed it on tuesday 25 january 2020 um 
I don't know if the shelving system has changed since then, but I'll link to that video. Happy Sunday as I'm filming this 20, no, 30 July, 2023.